In this video, I'll prove some of the key facts about convergence of power series. My ultimate goal is to prove that there are only three possible options for convergence. A power series could converge only at its center, it could converge for all real numbers, and if these two options don't hold, then there must exist a number r such that the power series converges for all x within r units away from the center A, and the power series diverges for all x whose distance from A is greater than r. First, I'll prove some preliminary facts. I'll start with this one. If a power series converges when x is equal to b, for some non-zero number b, then it also converges for any x whose absolute value is less than the absolute value of b. To prove this fact, let's assume that the power series converges when x is equal to b, that is, the sum of c sub n times b to the n converges. If a series converges, then the limit of its terms has to equal zero, since if the limit of the terms is not equal to zero, the series would have to diverge by the divergence test. Therefore, by the definition of limit, for any epsilon, there exists a number capital N such that c sub n times b to the n is between 0 plus epsilon and 0 minus epsilon for little n bigger than or equal to capital N. In particular, if we pick epsilon equal to 1, this says there exists a capital N such that negative 1 is less than c sub n times b to the n is less than 1 for little n bigger than or equal to capital N. I can rewrite this statement as the absolute value of c sub n times b to the n is less than 1 for little n bigger than or equal to capital N. Now, if x is any number with absolute value less than the absolute value of b, we can write the absolute value of c sub n times x to the n as the absolute value of c sub n times b to the n times x over b to the n, just using algebra. I can rewrite this as c sub, absolute value of c sub n times b to the n times the absolute value of x over b to the n. For little n bigger than or equal to capital N, we know that the absolute value of c sub n times b to the n is less than 1. So this expression has to be less than the absolute value of x over b to the n. Now if the absolute value of x is less than the absolute value of b, this means that the absolute value of x over b is less than 1. So the series, the sum of x, absolute value of x over b to the n, is a geometric series whose ratio has absolute value less than 1, so it's a convergent series. Now the ordinary comparison test tells us that the sum of the absolute value of c sub n, x to the n, also converges, because we know that the terms of that series are less than the terms of our convergent geometric series. Therefore, our original series, the sum of c sub n x to the n, converges absolutely and therefore converges. So we've proved the first statement. The second statement says that if the power series diverges when x is equal to d for some non-zero number d, then it also diverges whenever we have an x whose absolute value is greater than the absolute value of d. This statement follows directly from the first statement, because suppose we have the sum of c sub n times d to the n diverges. If the absolute value of x is bigger than the absolute value of d, and the sum of c sub n x to the n converged, then by part 1, 
the sum of c sub n d to the n would have to converge since the absolute value of d is less than the absolute value of x. But this contradicts the assumption that the sum of c sub n times d to the n diverges, and therefore we know that the sum of c sub n times x to the n must diverge after all. That's all for the proof of facts about convergence of series.